okay so today is sunday 28th july 2019 28th of july 2019 and our reading is taken from the book of second samuel chapter 5 and we'll read from verse 17 to verse 25 and it reads second samuel 5 17 to 25 now when the philistines heard that they had anointed david king over israel all the philistines went up to search for david and david heard of it and went down to the stronghold the philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of raphaim so david inquired of the lord saying shall i go up against the philistines will you deliver them into my hand and the lord said to david go up for i will doubtless deliver the philistines into your hand so david went to baal perazim and david defeated them there and he said the lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And they left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. Verse 22. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, and he said, and, and he said, sorry, I'll take 23 again. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, and he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them, and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord commanded him. And he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Geza. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most wonderful God, eternal word of God. Father, we bless your name and we thank you for your provision for us, for providing your word. Your word is our strength. Your word is our wisdom. Your word is our liberation. Your word is our light. The entrance of your word brings light. Father, we can do nothing without your word. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now, the greatest teacher. Come and teach us the word. Make these words that we are reading uh, uh, become flesh, become life to us. Because Jesus says, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Make this word come alive for us. Speak to us, Father, through your word. And let all glory, all honor, all adoration be to you and you alone. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So you are welcome to this glorious day. And the title we want to use today is Marching on the Poplar Trees. I know I'm, I read from New King James Version, the poplar tree that you might find in other versions is the same as mulberry tree. So don't let that uh, distract you. And the name Geba is also Gibeon. So these are just real names that can change. It's the same thing. Okay? So title is Marching on the Poplar Trees. I chose to use the name Poplar here. Um, and this is the supernatural at work. And everything we do, we have to understand, is supernatural. This is the supernatural at work. Never imagine that because you pray to God 
and you believe in God that your life will be trouble free that's a lie you never believe it oh I pray to God every day so why am I in so much trouble you, 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 you have to know that God is there all the time no matter what you go through he clearly says when you go through the waters I'll be there with you when you go through the fire I'll be there with you he never said you will never go through storms and, and, and trouble okay just remember that he is God and he's always alive and he's there he, he is the one actually seeing you through that trouble you need to know that God is alive because the demons know that he's alive and that is what uh, the gospel of Mark chapter 1 I'll read that for, for us quickly Mark chapter 1 23 to 27 Mark 1 23 to 27 now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with you jesus of nazareth did you come to destroy us i know who you are the holy one of god you see the demons know jesus so anybody who says they don't know jesus they are wasting their time demons know jesus and they tremble they tremble in his presence. He said, why, why have you come? What have we got to do with you? They know that there is time for judgment. But right now, they want to, to you know, oppress human beings. Because we gave them that authority at the fall. When Adam and Eve fell, we handed over our right, our, our birthright to Satan. So he's in charge for now. So the demons know it, that they are on a rampage. They are having a, a, their own party. This is their party time. Uh, but they know that their time of judgment is, come, is coming. So that's why they cried out, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? They had to mention which Jesus they were talking about so that you don't think that any Jesus is Jesus. The demons, you know, knew his title. They knew him to the root Jesus of Nazareth we are not talking about any other Jesus we are talking about this particular Jesus of Nazareth the demon say what have we to do with you did you come to destroy us you know that he's coming for their destruction and yet human beings are walking around without knowledge did you come to destroy us I know who you are. See how they are speaking? I, one time, I, one time, me. You see, that's how demons do to confuse you. Because they are, post, they are, they are few inside that man. So sometimes it's I, sometimes it's we. You get it? Uh huh. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then the people were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirit, and they obey him. They've got to obey. They have no other choice. So we'll leave it there. I just wanted to lay that foundation. Don't fool yourself that there's no Jesus. Jesus is alive and well. 2,000 years ago and right now. He, said, he says his name is I am. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never says I was. He never says I will. He says I am. So he is right here with you. So when you go through anything, don't think that he has left you. The enemy will confront you as well if you claim to walk with Jesus. 
that's the whole point. You have to know that you will be confronted, opposed. Therefore, you must walk in the authority of this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't sit down and complain, why is this happening to me and why is that happening to me? The demons believe in God and they know and they acknowledge his authority over them. So you have to know and acknowledge your authority over demons in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this trouble is what David was going through. This is what happened to David. He loved God. He sang songs. He wrote these songs that we are reading. He prayed to God. But the moment he was anointed to be king over Israel, all hell broke loose. If all hell broke loose for David, who do you think you are? The moment you declare, I'm, I'm a Jesus freak, uh, Satan will say, okay, let's test you. You see, if, if, if hell stood up against Jesus himself and against David, you have to be sure that hell will stand up against you. You just have to know who you are and not be bothered about what they are doing. You just have to know where to go for resources rather than sit down and moan and cry. When David was anointed, that's when his trouble actually started. So if you start to follow Jesus and then trouble start to come, you have to thank God because now you have been recognized. You are doing something that is pinching the devil. So don't think that he will just sit down. You All you need to do is be prepared. Be prepared. Don't ever let it cross your mind that God is dead or God has forgotten you or God has no power to rescue you. That's all the lie of the enemy. Just know that you are a threat to Satan. You are a threat to his kingdom. You are a threat to his evil devices, to his oppression of, of innocent human beings. And whatever you stand for, you are a threat to him. So just stand your ground. Don't let his uh, uh, antagonistic spirit come to make you fall. Stand your ground. Be, let that ground that you stand on in Jesus become a platform for you to stand and give your testimony. Don't let Satan push you away from your position. Take that position, stand on that ground, remember you are standing on the rock and let that place become your platform for a testimony. Because it is your testimony that you can use and help others. You can tell them what is going, what you are going through, I went through that. And here I am, I'm still standing. And here is my testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. God wants you to testify for what he's done. Yes, you've been through the storm, but he was there with you. Do not fall for the lie of the enemy. That you don't let him tell you, oh, you are alone. Everybody has forsaken you. God has forsaken you. God is so far away. You, you, you can cry. He's not even hearing you. Tell him, no, no, no. And just stand your ground. Do like David did. Inquire of the Lord. Depend even more on God at those times. Let us see what David did. Verse 17. So the moment, now he says, Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David over Israel, the anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for one man, David. Hell broke loose. All. All of them went looking for one man. 
And when David heard it, he went down to the stronghold. So when they heard it, they went after him. Nobody knew him before then. Why did they not go before? David was still alive before then. Why did they not go before? Because they had nothing to destroy. If Satan is, uh, is after you, know that he, he's, he, he has something he wants. You, you must have something precious. If he's not after you, then you are not. Then you have nothing. They went after David after they have heard that he has become king. And now they knew they had something to destroy. Because Satan comes to kill, steal, destroy. They now knew that, they, 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 that there was a crown they could steal. They now knew that there was a destiny to kill. Before then, they didn't, they didn't bother him. Satan comes to kill, steal, destroy. Steal your crown of glory and destroy and kill your destiny. All the Philistines, they didn't even send out like the Israelites did, send out two people to spy or ten people to spy or twelve people to spy. No, all of them. The greater your potential, the greater your enemy. You have to know it. All the Philistines went up to search for one man. And David went into hiding. David went into hiding. He was king. He was king, but he went into hiding. Why? He could have been pompous and said, look guys, I'm the king now. I'm going to send my army after you. How can you chase me? I'm the king of Israel. No, he wasn't pompous. Because if he had done that, that would have been pride and it would lead to suicide. He would be killed. He would, he would just have offered himself for them to kill him. But what did David do? David found a quiet place. He ran away from trouble, found a quiet place, and what did he do? He inquired of the Lord. He did not take matters into his hand. He did not say, God, but I've, 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 I've run from souls for all this time. Why now these Philistines? Since I was crowned king, Saul pursued me, now Saul is dead, now the Philistines. No. David knew who he was in God. So he went away from trouble, trusted in God, looked for a quiet place, and inquired of the Lord. He did not run Oh, now you can take your kingdom. I don't want to be this king anymore. It's, you hear people say that and they lose their destiny because that's what Satan wants. Oh, I'm tired of all this. I don't want it again. Take your kingdom. Let me have my peace. Remember uh, Job's wife? Denounce God and, and, be, and be free. Nonsense. It's a blessing. God has chosen you for something special. Don't let Satan rob you of your destiny. So like David, we need to learn to trust God. That's our lesson. Trust God in the, in, in the face of tribulation. Trust God in the face of opposition. Trust God in the storm. Trust God wherever and whenever. Just know, know like the demons, that God is alive and powerful. If demons know it, you should know it. Trust in the supernatural. Trust in the one that causes demons to tremble. David inquired of the Lord. He said, shall I? Will you? Let, let, let's look at it. Verse 19. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up? against the Philistines 
will you deliver them into my hand? He didn't say, will I conquer them? He said, will you deliver them? He depended on God to, to deliver the enemy to, into his hand. He's the one fighting, but God goes ahead of him and wins the war before, beforehand. This is what we need to know. This is why I've preached here once. See, this salvation story has been rigged by the work of the cross. You already know the answer. You don't, you don't, when, you, when it says work out your salvation, it's not go and save yourself. Start thanking Jesus. I thank you that you saved me. And that's what gives you the boldness to go ahead. The game has been rigged already. Jesus is alive. His blood has set you free by his stripes. You are, all this is rigged. We know the end of the story. Why are we doing as if we don't? This is how simple the gospel is. So simple that it confuses those who want to be clever. It's so simple it confuses and confounds the wise. Only children get it. You tell a child, go there, I've left some sweet for you, some candies for you. They'll run there immediately. They will go first to see because you've told them. They won't even think of doubting you when you say, I've left sweet there for you. But we, we are too clever without God. We start to question. We think that God is like us. David went to ask God, do you want me to go? Shall I go? It's like, I, I, are you backing me up? Are you in this? Shall I go? Will you? Will you? He didn't say, will I? It's so profound. David never said, will I overcome? Will I, will I, will I be victorious? He said, will you, God, deliver my enemy into my hand? It's written there, I did not write this. Will you deliver them? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubt less. Without doubt, I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. That is your confidence in God. That is your boldness in God. That is your authority in God. See this wall. And Jesus says, you, you want to go here? When the trouble comes, Jesus said, no, go here. You say, oh, Lord, but that's, that's a concrete wall. I, I think there's a window there. I'd rather break the glass and go. You're running into trouble. Just obey him. Before you reach there, that wall has melted. He makes a way where there's no way. But we are too clever. A whole nation rose up against one man and he knew to go away and hide and ask God what shall I do what are you doing in this he knew that he had to depend on and trust in God and he realized that it is God who who, who will deliver the enemy into his hand not his, his, oh, the uh, Saul chases thousand, David chases ten thousand. It's not his fighting ability that was going to do it. He knew it was God who, who will do it. This is so critical, we cannot ignore it. In times of trouble, I'm preparing your mind in case you run into trouble. Do not panic. Remember the story. It's so critical. It was God who caused David to be victorious. It wasn't David's uh, 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 battle techniques. 
it wasn't his plan sitting in the boardroom bring the map let us see where the enemy is let us see how we can attack let us no 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 it wasn't any of that he heard instructions and he obeyed he asked for it because he trusted in that voice should i go will you be there god says yeah doubtless i'll be there So that was done. God delivered the Philistines into his hand. Verse 20. So David went to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me. The Lord had to go ahead of him. He broke through before him like a breakthrough of water, like water breaks out. Therefore, he called that place Baal-perazim. They ran, they left their images, their idols, and David and his men carried them away. If you read that in, in Chronicles, it will tell you they carried them away to burn them. The same story you can find in, in Chronicles. So they burned their idols after destroying them. Now listen, verse 22. Did the enemy accept defeat? No, verse 22. Then the Philistines, the Philistines went up once again. You think, oh, now I can rest. No, don't sleep. The enemy is not sleeping because you have something he wants to kill, steal, destroy. You beat him one time, he goes and comes back. Remember what Jesus said? When an evil spirit is cast out of a man, he goes roaming around in dry places. If he doesn't find another victim, he says, let me go back and check my old house. He calls you his house. And he comes, and you don't have the word of God in you. He, he will say, cousin, come. Grandpa, come. Grandma, come. Brother, come. Let us go and occupy this place so that next time it will be much, much more difficult for them to drive us out. I won't leave there alone anymore. And the, the condition of that person is worse than before. That's what Jesus says. We have to be alert. Have to be alert. The enemy will go when you throw them out. But they will go and gather up and come back. So don't sleep because they do not sleep. Then verse 22. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Verse 23. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord. David did not say, Aha, uh -huh. last time God said I should go up. This time I'll just take it for granted. Did he take it for granted? No, he asked again. Okay, Lord, last time you said I should go up. Now, what do you think? It's a new situation. Don't assume that old tactics will work. God is always doing a new thing. He, he says, I am. He is doing something right now. So don't think that your prayer of yesterday has covered today's trouble. Ask him again. Okay, now that they have come again, what shall we do? So in this case, when David inquired of the Lord, the Lord said, you shall not go up. What? I, I should not go up. Panic, panic, panic. They are going to kill me. They are going to kill me. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen to the end. You shall not go up. Circle around behind them and come upon them in front of the mulberry or poplar trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the trees, then you shall advance quickly. R really, Lord? Did, uh, did, I, did I hear you? A sound of marching on, on the did, did you not say a wind will blow on the leaves? Who, who, who? Lord, I think you make a mistake there. 
I think you meant this, that I will hear, you know, rustling or wind blowing on the leaves. You sure you meant marching? How can people march on top of the trees? You see, that's where we miss it. That's where we miss it. We try to tell God what it should be. We, we bring God down to our small brands and try to correct God. God says, go right. And you say, oh, but on the right side, I, I can't pass. Like I just said, oh, there's a concrete wall, I can't pass. I, I think you meant left. Oh, God, I'll just go left because I can see an open door there. And that's how we make the wrong choices. When we walk into danger, we start saying, but God, but God, I've been serving you. I've been praying to you. Why did you let this happen to me? And God said, I told you to go to the right. Live by faith, not by sight. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. My ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So don't bring me to your level. I can see what is happening to you before you even know it. In order to succeed, we have to learn to walk in and with the supernatural. There's no other way as a Christian. Without faith, you cannot please God. God says when you hear a marching, people, you hear people marching, marching, how is marching? Is, is it not soldiers walking, you know, making a real sound on top of trees that means you have to be quiet and listen to what God is doing when Elijah went to seek God there was earthquake there was fire there was storm but the Bible says and God was not in any of that until he quieted himself and then he heard a still small voice it's not what we think. We, is not, we think, oh, God is coming through this door. No, you cannot put him in that kind of a box. You have to follow him. He doesn't have to follow you. And so God gave David very specific instructions. When you hear the sound of marching in the top of the mulberry or poplar trees, then you shall advance quickly. The spirit is swift. Don't sit down and drop. Oh, did I hear or did I not hear? If you were quiet enough, you would have heard. You only be unsure if you were not quiet enough and actually listening. And that's when God says, move quickly. Don't waste any time. Advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you. Before you even lift away. You see, you are, you are here waiting you know, very, very alert, you hear that marching, you move. Before you even move, God has already gone out. And you think you are quick. God has already gone out. He's not like you. He doesn't need to take one step. He's here now, he's there next, next same moment. Not even next moment, same moment. So don't try to calculate God with your own mind. When you advance quickly, for then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Verse 25, thank God, he says, and David did so. And that's what, that's our lesson. Just do as he says. And David did so, as the Lord commanded and he drove back the Philistines from Gibeon as far as Gaza, or Geba as far as Gaza. 
Do not delay when God says go. Do not reason when God says go. Do not question when God says go. Move quickly. Like I gave the example of that child. Oh, troubling mommy. Mommy says, oh, I have cookies there or sweets there for you. The child will forget whatever they wanted from mommy. They'll run there if they are the type that likes sweet. Because the mom will know what they like, of course. So that child did not say, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, you are trying to trick me. No child thinks like that. No child thinks like, oh, mom, you just want to trick me. That's why you say, "Mm mm-mm. At that age, one year, two years, they don't. It's only when they grow up, they start to think. And Jesus says, let the little ones come to me because theirs is the kingdom. You You can't come to me unless you are like a little child. Trust and obey. If you know, if you have made up your mind to walk with God, then expect that you will not always understand his ways. You will not always understand what he says. One time he says go. One time he says don't go. And you start to question. If you knew it, why did you go to ask him? Then just do your thing and deal with the consequences. But if you ask him and he says, go this time and next time don't go, it's because he knows what you don't know. He says, just surround them and wait. When you hear this marching sound, now at that moment, let go. Because God knows what the enemy is planning that you don't know. Walk by faith and not by sight. Trust and obey. Without faith, you can't please God. God went ahead when David obeyed. For then the Lord will go out before you ahead of you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so as God commanded. And he drove back the Philistines. It is not what we can do. It is what God wants to do through us. You are not the one fighting your enemies. Let God do it. It might be you lifting the battle axe. But if God didn't put the strength in your hand, will you be able to lift the battle axe? So let God do it for you. It is time for our acceleration. It is time to accelerate, to move quickly. Once you have an instruction, move. God is spirit. He does not live in time. So do not limit him. For our own good, we have to tap into the supernatural. And know ahead of time that your body and your senses may disagree. But do it anyway if you trust and obey. Your friends will not always agree. Your father or mother or brother or sister or colleagues will not always agree. But if you know that you heard his voice, go ahead and do it anyway. Don't wait for everybody to agree with what you are doing, to accept you. Whose acceptance do you want, God or humans? What people think have no bearing with what God is thinking. If you choose to serve God, choose to serve God and not human beings. Let the supernatural be at work in you. Let it be that your deliverance comes when you hear the marching sound on top of trees doesn't make sense to any human being but that is how God chose to do it don't let people tell you that is right that is wrong ask God what do you say 
everybody has his own level, his own mind. That's why we have to come to God as children and just trust him. Depend on the supernatural. Move quickly when he says to move and trust him that he is going ahead of you before you even reach there. Amen? Okay. So let us pray. Let us concentrate, focus our minds on acceleration. He says, when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the poplar trees, then you shall advance quickly. Let us ask God. Father, give us the ability in this season to advance quickly, to accelerate. Give us power. Give us the, 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 the mind to trust you, to believe you, and to just do what you say without questioning, without doubting, without fear. Because Satan wants you to fear and think it cannot work. It does not work. You did not hear well. Say, yes, I heard well. Agree with God and disagree with your senses. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We honor you. We love you. We bless you. Jesus, you said it has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Father, these are the mysteries that we know. These are secrets that we know. These are things that you tell us, that you reveal to us that the world has no idea about. Lord, we just pray that we would agree with your word, that we would align ourselves with your word, that we would do what you say, whether it makes sense to our minds or not. We surrender our wills unto you. We bring our, our thoughts under subjection to the obedience of Christ. And we say, Lord, have your way. We know that your way is perfect. We know that you want the best for us. We have a godly inheritance with you. Show us the path of life. Lead us, O Lord, in that path of righteousness for your name's sake. Because in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Thank you that you are not man that you should lie. Thank you that you are not playing games with us. That you say, oh, I was just joking. No, we know that your word can never fail. According to Isaiah 55. We bless your name. Your word falls down like rain. And it can never go back to you void. So when you say it, you will do it. And so we say, thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.